What a dumb place to store a flashlight. A dark cellar. The only way I was going to find anything down there was to feel around. Or we could just poke this rather obvious object just here. My hand closed on a long metal rod. I pushed the lever and heard the grating of metal, but nothing appeared to happen. We're not going to reach it from here, so let's go back upstairs. I lifted the trap door and an overpowering smell of stale beer rose from the cellar below. I looked down on a stone tiled floor, way too far to jump. Excuse me. There was a nasty feeling in my guts I usually associated with light opera. It was Khan. What's the problem? Did you see what happened here a few minutes ago? What was that? A man was involved in an unfortunate accident. I didn't see anything. What about the boy? Well, he doesn't know anything either. The kid, well, you know how it is in these rural communities. Not enough genes to go around. I prayed McGuire had the sense to keep his mouth shut. Was the guy hurt bad? He's been taken care of, but he thinks he dropped a small parcel. You didn't happen to find it, did you? If I had, I would have taken it to the police. Of course. Thank you. Come back here and shake my hands. The trap door gave access to the cellar of the bar. It wasn't my nerves that stopped me jumping. It was my damned legs. They wouldn't move. Then I noticed a flash of light, something sparkling beneath the open trap door. It was Pegram's gem, all right. A large, uncut blue stone. As I held it aloft, I realized the fascination it could command. I guess I was already under its spell. Did you find it? What? Whatever you was looking for. Uh, yeah. Listen, McGuire. I want you to keep this to yourself. No problemo. Just chuck us up a crate of lager. No way. You're not old enough. We can sell it and make some cash. Forget it, kid. I couldn't betray Mr. Leary's trust. I could. For sure. That old misery guts deserves it. If you want to do me a favor, keep a lookout for that guy in the suit. Okay, but it'll cost you a pack of the chips. Oh, and shout if you see that Ferrari! Don't worry, we won't tell a soul that we have this blue gem. It was a large blue gemstone. Well, maybe one or two souls. It was a couple of paper sacks filled with trash. I searched the trash, but... There was nothing useful there. It was a calendar with a faded photograph of a prize-winning carp. It was a bunch of cleaning materials. I looked among the cleaning materials, but saw nothing I could use. It was a rusty faucet. The slow drip of water barely dampened the towel. 
The faucet creaked, coughed, and spewed out a stream of rusty colored water. I held the towel under the faucet and soaked it with water. I shut off the faucet as tight as I could, but it kept on dripping. I don't have to turn off the faucet, but it's nice to be polite. We don't want to leave water running endlessly. Apparently there is also a bug if you keep the faucet on, so I don't really want to trigger that. I've never encountered it before, but it's not too uncommon, I believe. <laughs> Hello, Kuller. Jekut. Nico? Who is this? It's me, George. Oh, hello, George. Where are you? I'm in Ireland. What's it like there? Kind of sleepy. Comatose, even. Did you get to talk to Picaram? I haven't found him yet. I figured I'd call you first. Are you okay? Oh, sure I am. Don't worry about me, George. Any signs of our friend the clown? Yeah. He turned up dressed as a pixie. What? Did he see you? He came back and talked to me. Oh, you're crazy, George. The killer knows who you are. Relax. It wasn't me he was after. It was Pegram's gem. We've done all that we can do here at the pub. What we need to do now is get some access to the no. castle. Hi, it's me again. So I see. What now? Hmm, maybe not. This is the gem that Pegram found in the castle. So that's what all the fuss was about. I can't see why myself. Why men would fight and steal and kill over a little bauble like that. Well, it's kind of neat the way it sparkles. Did you happen to see a red sports car down on the road? I caught a glimpse of a flash of red on the hill and heard the racket. Sure, it was an awful noise. A sports car, you say? A Ferrari, to be exact. A racing car? And what was it doing here? The poor fella must have been lost. The driver of the Ferrari was involved in an accident. Is that so? Yeah. He knocked somebody down outside the bar. What an idiot! How could a thing like that happen? He was traveling too fast. So fast, he ran right under the car? I mean, the car was traveling too fast. But you'd have thought the idiot could have heard it coming. Maybe you know the guy who was hit by the Ferrari. His name is Sean Fitzgerald. Oh, I know him all right. That's me nephew, the idiot responsible for the stacking of my hay cart. Was he killed by the car? Oh, no. But he has been abducted. Well... That's a relief now. How did Fitzgerald manage to stack all of this hay? Aren't you going to look for your nephew? What for? From what you say, it's too late. Well, you could report the matter to the police. Better not. Besides, what could they do? Well, they could mount a search. They have only the one bicycle between them. In a question of superior acceleration, I put me money on the Ferrari. I think you ought to know exactly what Sean has gotten himself into. I'm not sure I want to know. But you're his uncle. His own flesh and blood. You're right. But what can I do? If I'm not here to guard it, some idiot might try to climb the haystack. What a moral dilemma. Stay here and guard this potentially lethal agricultural construction. Or to go off in search of the prodigal nephew, the very man responsible for said hazard. It'll need some thinking about. Why, there's no problem. You're right. Why didn't I think of it before? We'll demolish the haystack. You don't have to demolish the haystack to go look for Sean. I'll stay here in your place and warn anyone who's silly enough to climb it. Marvelous. I think I should start me inquiries in the bar. He strode off in the direction of McDevitt's bar, leaving me to contemplate the stack of hay. Now, 
Who would be silly enough to climb this? On the back of the cart was a crazily stacked tower of hay bales, leaning precariously against the castle wall. What could go wrong? The stack of hay stopped short of the top of the wall. Even if I stretched as far as I could, the wall was out of reach. What I needed was a slice or two of Alice's Wonderland. Oh, come on, you can reach that. Just jump. Now, it's not really obvious because George is actually covering it up, but the other. Oh, no, he's not covering it up. There was a narrow crack between two of the stones where the centuries old mortar had crumbled away. I pushed my fingers into the narrow crack. It went back several inches into the rock. Yes, this is an, an, an unfortunate case of pixel hunting. I inserted the end of the lifting key in the mortarless crack and gave it a firm shove. It remained lodged in the wall, jutting out to form a step. And here we have the very famous goat puzzle. Hi there. Hey, Billy. The animal fixed on me with an evil glare. Behind the malice and resentment, there was a cool intelligence. How you doing, boy? I felt as threatened as I'd been by the assassin and his goons in Paris. It was the fiercest, meanest looking old goat I'd ever laid eyes upon. This is very famous for being one of the most difficult puzzles of all time in adventure games. There's only two things that we can do. We can go left. It was a rusted piece of iron. Maybe part of a plow or something. Or we can go right. Get up, George. He's very quick to knock us down, but you may notice there is a bit of a wind-up time as he reverses. The goat's movements were restricted by a halter tied to a metal post. So what we need to do is find a way to distract him momentarily. The rope by which the goat was tethered had become tangled on the old plowshare. Now, I've just made this look incredibly easy, and some people may be wondering why was this so notorious. It's just a case of you have two directions to go in, but there has not been a puzzle before now that involves time management. And as well, you, you've been knocked on your ass, so... How are you supposed to work out? You have to get up very quickly and run across to select this. But yeah, that's all you need to do. And this caused frustration in a lot of people, including me when I first played this. This puzzle was the bane of my existence for some time. Anyway, let's continue on. Behind the altar was a carved panel, decorated with animals, birds, and plants. I tried in vain to move the panel. 
there was a pattern of five holes arranged on the wall. They'd been drilled there deliberately. I placed my fingers and thumb into the holes in the wall. Nothing happened. It was a statue which had fallen from its place on the wall. Five fingers of stone projected from the back of the carving. The statue was too heavy to lift. It overbalanced into the sand. The statue lay face up in the soft sand. As I swung the stone upright, I noticed it had left a pattern of holes in the sand. And this pattern seems to match the one on the wall. The bench had probably been used by Pegram and his archaeological team. The only object on the table which interested me was a small sack. The sack contained a fine white powder. As I dipped my fingers into the soft white powder, I realized what it was. Plaster of Paris. I'd used it in kindergarten to make casts of animal paw prints. I sprinkled the plaster on the sand until the holes were filled. The patch of sand where the statue had fallen was covered with a dense sprinkling of plaster. I smoothed the plaster level with the sand. It was my first experience of home improvement. Luckily we have this water-soaked towel. I squeezed the towel as hard as I could but it was barely damp. Yeah, this is another timed puzzle where you only have a limited amount of time to get this drenched towel here. So we have to return back to the pub. See you later, goats. The lifting key was rammed tightly into the crack in the wall, forming a strong foothold. Hey, McGuire. What do you want to know? We can at least show him this gem here. Want a closer look at the gem, McGuire? No, I don't. Jules is for girls. You'd better hide that, mister. What if the pixie comes back? You'll be in trouble then. I don't believe in pixies. Underneath that costume is a psychotic killer. Smart. What do you think of my flashlight? It's a torch. That's what we call it on this side of the Atlantic. See you later, kid. Okay, mister. How's the search going? The farmer was drinking and chatting with his pals as if nothing had happened. Maybe abduction had replaced cattle raiding as their national pastime. Hello. Ah, uh, hello there. Let me introduce you to my pals. We've already met. Do you recognize this white powder? Seems ordinary enough to me. I want you to know you have my sympathy. 
Oh, it's just terrible, awful. It's the worst news I heard all day. Let's top the bad news all right for this week and the next. The whole year? It's worse than that. It's the worst disaster in living memory. Isn't it the biggest calamity in the history of the village? I would say it's the biggest in the history of Ireland. The most awesome disaster since mankind paddled out of the primal plop. There's no beer. What about Sean? Why aren't you out looking for him? There's no point in launching an ill-equipped expedition to save the lad. In a life-or-death situation, preparation is essential. That's why I slipped in here. For a point. Is a glass of beer more important than a man's life? Were you talking to me? To all of you. Sean Fitzgerald has met with God knows what and all you can do is drink. Sean has gone for a ride in a flash car, that's all. Why don't you calm down and join us? Join you for what? There's no beer. I gotta go. Excuse me, Mr. O'Brien. Hello there. What now? What do you think of this flashlight? It's not a very practical piece of equipment, is it? It's not switched on. Well, I'd refer to the lack of a bracket. How would you be fixing that to your bicycle? I don't have a bicycle. Do you recognize this gem? Ah, that's a beautiful stone. Is it the one which Pegram found? And the reason why both he and Fitzgerald have disappeared. Then it's only a matter of time before you vanish too. What do you make of this white powder? Could it be bicarburetor of soda? Goodbye for now. Hey! Hello there again, mister! What do you think of this flashlight? It's not very bright, is it? I could say the same about some of the present company. That's true. But don't let him hear you. Keep it under your hat, mister. That flashlight, like your brain dial, is not switched on. I don't think he heard me. <laughs> wow. What's going on between these two? Do you recognize this gem? Saints be praised. It must be worth a fortune. Uh, maybe it is. Have you seen it before? It's the one which Pegram took from the dig. Oh. How come you've got it now? He left it behind. I'm looking after it. Oh. You could take that to Dublin and sell it. Do you recognize this white powder? No, I don't. Bye for now. Excuse me. Uh, yes, sir? I found your flashlight. So I see you. You'd better keep hold of that until you fix the pumps. Does this gem mean anything to you? Phew. What a beauty. I bet you wish that was real, don't you? Does this... I knew it. The minute you walked through the door, I knew you spelled trouble. Now, just a minute. It might be what you're used to in New York, but we don't use that stuff here. Hey, it's plaster. I found it in the castle. Thanks. Hello again. What? What do you think of this flashlight? Very useful. That could be very handy in the dark. How much do you want for it? It's not for sale. It belongs to Leary. What does this gem mean to you? Well, well. Would you look at that? Pretty. Do you recognize it? No. What do you make of this white powder? Fever. No. Whoops. I'll see you later. Okay. There's only one thing left to do now, and that is to get this water and get it there as quickly as possible. The faucet creaked 
coughed and spewed out a stream of rusty colored water. I held the towel under the faucet and soaked it with water. I shut off the faucet as tight as I could, but it kept on dripping. The towel was soaked through with water. I do kind of feel bad for leaving him here. The towel was soaked through with water. Okay, so you do actually have a fair amount of time. The trickle of water was quickly absorbed by the plaster. I eased the solid piece of plaster from the sand. Underneath, it had formed a perfect copy of the statue. That was fast. The hardened plaster cast fitted snugly into the five matching sockets. There was a soft thud then, silence. <laughs> 